Happy New Year's, New Year, New Show. So recently I released my top five albums of the year list and much like every year it was met with a bit of criticism. And to be honest, I expected it. Once I made the decision to include Drake, it was almost like I was inviting the negative reactions. Reason being is that it's Drake. Like he's the epitome of commercialized MC. Like no man sets these kinds of records on album sales, streams, or even radio spins without making the kind of music that hip hop culture refuses to accept. And with Drake being the biggest name in music right now, still, and me being an underground music reviewer, many would assume that I would dislike anything he releases, but obviously that isn't the case. See, I could care less about the acceptance of an individual in the culture. I care more about the music that said person delivers. When you begin to play politics with music, then you miss out on quality. Look at it like this. Why is it that people don't listen to underground artists? My end of year lists are proof that there are plenty of quality acts out here making better music than those that everybody complains about. The problem is the politics. Like, if nobody have heard of you, then you must not be good. As false of a statement that is, by action, most people abide by it. See, there are more than enough options out here for you to find great music, but instead you find time to complain about acts like Lil Pump to Drake. And to quote Jay-Z, it's politics as usual. But since I could care less about the name that's attached to a certain project, I can listen to great unknowns like Buick B to the over-promoted acts like Drake with the same energy. See, the only bias that I have is I want quality music, not name brands, not the promotion, not the record label cosign, not the features, etc. And going down this path, I was able to find great acts that in years to follow built names for themselves in the music industry like Freddie Gibbs, Toy Lanes, Logic, and the list goes on. So with this in mind, I gave Drake's Scorpion album a fair, unbiased listen, and I'm here to report to you that it was a top five album of 2018. So outside of this being a Drake album, many others are denying it due to the fact that he had a battle with Pusha T on the eve of the release of the album. And it's widely considered that Drake was defeated here, therefore a black eye was put on the album, especially since these same people gave such high marks to Pusha T's Daytona. And it does seem as though it's been quote unquote confirmed with Daytona's Grammy nomination. But for those of you who watch my videos, you realized a long time ago that I believe first, the Grammys have no clue what good music is, even if it slapped them in the face. And second, Drake defeated Pusha T with superior music here. See, what made the story of Added On good is the lengths that Push would go in order to sabotage Drake's image, not the quality that he has shown that he can do in the past with songs like Exodus 23-1, which was about Drake. Therefore, using the inside information to expose him was a successful tactic in the essence of what rap beef has always been about. But yet the problem is, historically, the best music is what wins, not the facts. See, you don't believe me? Ask Ja Rule, as he had evidence of 50 Cent's quote-unquote association with police, which is a big no-no for hip-hop culture, but where exactly did that get him? Of God, he said it plain as day. They had career-killing evidence, but yet the people just didn't want to hear it. So, yes, Pusha T went as vicious as he could, and over time, what he spoke has proven to be factual, but that song didn't satisfy any aspect of what makes quality music from the production, delivery, structure, to the catchy quality, etc. And I know what you all are about to say. Like, beef records aren't supposed to be catchy. Tell that to the South Bronx. The South South Bronx are more fittingly back to back. But even Drake himself said the tactic that Pusha T used was genius but the song was trash. And it is my belief that people dislike Drake so much that any perceived victory against him 
is what people are going to ride with. But yet, was this a victory? Like, when the Japanese kamikaze pilots attacked Pearl Harbor, they dealt a blow, but did they win the war? But now that we got that out the way, let's look at the actual album. As I said in my review, there's a great album here, if only it wasn't a double disc. And one thing that I love about Spotify is the fact that it keeps your playlist well organized so that you can draw comparisons to the number of songs you like between projects. For Drake Scorpion, I held on to seven songs, and that is not a common occurrence for me. The only other acts that I have held on to as many songs over the past three years would be Ritz, as he did that over multiple albums, Bruno Mars with the classic 24 Killed Magic album, and this Nipsey Hussle Victory Lap album. That's it. Real talk. I like less songs from Anderson Pack's Oxnard album, but yet I rated that one higher. See, there are a bunch of things that's different about this album, like how typically I dislike all forms of singles because they focus too heavily on getting sales than getting actual quality music out of it. But when you watch my review for Nice For What, I explicitly said that this song was going to be the biggest song of the year and I actually still like that to this day. Gems like 8 out of 10 are superior to what most people have even brought in this year. Talk Up produced by DJ Paul with that prototypical 3-6 Mafia energy was an amazing surprise as Drake was able to capture the proper delivery and was able to obtain a solid verse from Jay-Z which hasn't happened in quite a while. Take the song After Dark. Yes, this continues his monotone singing techniques, which I for one am tired of, but yet every once in a while, he delivers songs like this, which shows us why these types of songs elevated his career in the first place. And Ty Dolla Sign should definitely get more credit for why that song is so good. On Emotionless and Sandra's Rose, Drake brings more quality hip-hop with that super personalized content that we come to know him deliver throughout the years. And lastly, that Don't Talk To Me featuring Mike. Yes, I know the Jackson family didn't want that release, but personally, I dig the vibe. It is hard to enjoy this much music from one project and not consider it as a best of 2018. In closing, the culture as we see it today seems to be fatigued with Drake. Much like how people are constantly rooting for Tom Brady to lose because he's won so much, Drake has managed to reach that level in music. As much as people are hoping for his downfall, Drake, much like Brady, has put up a division winning effort and deserves to be recognized for it. No, his downfall didn't happen last year and he put up his best album in a while and this is why it's the first album to make my personal top album of the year list. Haters hate to hold L's, but you're gonna have to hold one on this one. No matter how much you try to prop up Pusha T's project out of spite, it isn't going to change much of anything. Yes, this Drake album was top five of 2018.